So the second block is, um, I don't know, kind of services that the business is offering. So again, let's go to WordPress panel and say this will be a block. So section is selected. That's like the top element block services. And category will be custom flex. No need to register the category because we already did it in the first block above. And let's make uh, the elements editable. So this will be label again, used as content, section label. And then the title. the text and we can say let's make it rich text and here we have interesting situation we have a bunch of sub elements and we could simply make each of them like editable attribute of the main block. So this would be icon one, text label one, text one, icon two, la label two, name or name two, and, and so on. But th this is really would not work so well. So what if we have four services, not six, or what if we have eight um, it would be very very unflexible way and luckily luckily wordpress lets us define a new sub blocks so what we will do so let's find um, a parent element that contains all of these services so select it and then say this is block inner content so this is now the area that can contain other blocks and we don't want to the user to be able to put there just any kind of block we want to limit this to just service blocks so this is services block and now we will define we define a content area that contains service blocks and then we select the first the first service and we will define the service block here. So the ID is important. It has to be service because here on the block inner content, we said this will contain service blocks. So this is the ID. The name will be service. The category will be again custom flex. And here with more options, we can also say the parent. So this should only be displayed as a child of services block. So then it, it, won't, it won't be displayed like uh, when we are editing another type of block. So this helps us to keep the, the user interface more clean and to avoid any mistakes. And then let's select the, so what we have here. So we have SVG image and this will be block attribute call it image so it will be used as image image and blocks um, created with Pangro so fully support inline SVG images as well so we'll be able to use that there and then this will be the the name of the service And this will be the text, so block attributes. Text. We could also say description, but it doesn't matter now, it's already 
done. Okay, so now let's go and export the team. Let's close this. Go here, reload. And then down in the Flex website blocks, we have services blocks waiting for us. Let's add it to the page. And here it is. And again, everything is editable. I won't bo bore you with typing and all the content. So what's interesting is now we also have the section that contains the, the individual service blocks. And Pyro generated a template based on how many elements were there in this section. So there were six. So that's why we have a template with six uh, blocks. The content is different, like is the same for each of them. So, and then we can easily either remove them, remove service, or we can add a service. And then we can also change um, customized blocks. So for example, we could change the image. We can change the image. So, but here I only have uploaded images. So if I select one of them, that's not an icon. So it doesn't look good. So it would be great to have the option to use inline SVGs. And before I, I kind of said that can be done, but we can't do it here. So let's save it and go back to Pangro and we'll open the Team settings and for security reasons, the inline SVG images in block attributes are disabled by default. But if you know that only trusted users will edit the content, then we can enable this. Say save settings and export the team. And now if we reload the page and select the block. We have here the option to set inline SVG. So let's do that for the second block. And so I will go here and I will select the SVG and I will copy it. And then here I will select the second one and we'll say edit SVG. And I will paste in the inline SVG code. And here is our icon. Of course, we could also upload the, this SVG files to, to the media library and use them as regular images. But we also have the option to use inline SVGs. And we can edit this. Um, and that's very powerful, the combination of the blocks, inner content and custom sub blocks, it lets us define really versatile blocks um, that can structure the content like we have here. And it's all really painless to create. And Pangro does all the difficult work for us. And let's take a look at what kind of code is generated. So these are regular native uh, React based WordPress Gutenberg blocks. So for example, we have service services. If we take a look at services, JS file. So that contains a bunch of code that we would actually have to hand uh, manually code to have that working. And if you ever tried to create custom Gutenberg blocks with JavaScript, then you probably know it's quite an involved process, not an easy one. So you won't really, you know, <laughs> you'll be reluctant to create 
many custom blocks. So you'll say, oh, it's better to use, I don't know, a block from the block li library, even though it doesn't fit, fit perfectly. But because e each block requires so much investment in terms of development, um, then developers avoid creating custom blocks, even though they are the perfect solution for, for a specific uh, project uh, need. But with Pinegrow, that's really easy to do. And the cost of creating custom blocks, it's brought down to, to basically zero. It's really simple to do them. And all of the difficult stuff, like all this React code is generated by Pinegrow. So here we have the services block, and here we have then the service block. And all of these are just regular WordPress um, block files, blocks. So if we go here into our site and check out the plugins section, see we don't have any plugins that, that are needed to, to use these blocks. Here I just have like the generate thumbnails and save SVG, but there are no Pinegrow specific plugins. So that means that once these blocks are done or the team is done and it's uploaded on our site, Pinegrow is no longer in the picture there. They don't require Pinegrow, they don't depend on Pinegrow. So there's no messing around with plugins is just native WordPress files, be it the team files, template files, or Gutenberg blocks. So that's really special. And that's the main difference between Pinegrow and block builders such as Bricks, Oxygen, Elementor, and so on. Okay, so we, we did another block. Where is it here? Services. And I'll skip editing the content. That would be super boring. And we will go on and continue with, with another block.